and welcome to episode six of Impacted. And this week is going to be an absolute dream special uh, because we're going to be talking for glory. And today I am joined by none other than my brother from another mother coming in from the empty space in the void, the Joker. How do you do? I'm going to try and make it even more impressive every single week. So, so I'm going to really go for it and and see whether I can bring bring out a little bit of excitement in you. I'm going to try <laughs> every single week to see if I could get you to come back with a bit of excitement when I when I give you the biggest oh, uh, yes. intro that that you that you've ever seen. Right? Yes. I'm going to do it. One, we one need, of these we, weeks. Let me, we need a, a spark plugs somewhere. Yeah. One of these weeks, my friend, you are gonna you're gonna go for it with me, honestly. Oh, yeah. when, I, when, I, when I come in with a big one, <laughs> there's, there's still uh, butterflies, as we say, yeah, <laughs> as as it kicks off. But yeah, everyone listening and watching those once once it gets going, it gets going. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does. Um, okay, mate, have you had a good week? Because uh, we have not really spoke much this week, have we? I mean, we, a little bit over the sort of over the weekend with regards to BFG, but that was pretty much it because I think we've both been pretty busy. Um, so, what have you been up to? Uh, uh, pretty hell to skelter week. A um, uh, few uh, seizures here and there, um, but nothing, nothing major to, to worry everybody about. Okay, good. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's just just been a, a bog standard week for me, really. Just, just plodding through. Okay, cool. So Reco- um, recovering still, get getting all that done and dusted, getting forward with next step four there. Yep, yep, definitely. But there has been a couple of exciting things that have happened this week for for Impact, it hasn't there? One oh, yes. of them being the release of the brand spanking new Impact T shirt, guys. We're Impacted on Pro Wrestling T-shirt, T-shirt, baby. On Pro Wrestling Tees, added to the uh, Total Nonstop Impact shop. You want it. You know you want it. You want it. You'd want it. Now, what would be really cool, though, is if anybody has ordered it, or they are going to order this fantastic T-shirt, we would love to see pictures of you guys wearing it. So uh, make sure that you do that. Make sure if you do decide to spend your hard-earned cash on a, a impacted t-shirt that you get us a picture you get it all over the place let people know that you're you are a fan or you are a watcher or listener of the impacted brand um and uh yeah it would be fantastic to see those pictures it really would don't you agree joe oh i i, I was so blo- t- blown away um by, by the fact that um the guys at T and i got it got it done so quickly i wasn't expecting it till the new year so I got got my birthday coming up, so um, that's the. <laughs> it's on the list. It's on the list. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no. So it's great, guys. It's on there. Um. Uh, I think it's uh, nineteen ninety nine dollars or something like that. Yeah. Um. Which works out, I think, it like I don't know, uh, I don't know, forty, fifteen, sixteen pounds, I guess. Um. Obviously from pro, pro wrestling tees dot com. Um. Make sure. I think is it pro wrestling tees dot com or is it pro rest or is it pwt shirts maybe dot com i think it's it's pro wrestling tees okay Uh, if you just plug that into google google has all the answers it does uh, pro wrestling dot com if you need to know anything google is it you know bottom line google pro wrestling tees baby um and you'll find it just like i say just click on the the uh total non-stop impact uh shop um and you will find this fantastic t-shirt along with um other t-shirts from the um from from total non-stop impact so don't hesitate to buy those either um but it would be great just to see a few pictures of guys wearing these badass t-shirts um and i have to say that out of the two i think joe's character looks amazing right <laughs> it, it does look just like him so uh i think that's awesome um More teeth yeah oh really no i don't know about that i don't know about that right so um anyway so it's been an interesting (laughs) weekend hasn't it i mean we've got a couple of newsworthy items um but i think what we'll do is we'll go straight into the straight into the review um and i think we'll hit on a couple of those newsworthy items as we're going through um and you know we can sort of discuss those a little bit more um in depth as we go through it but what is interesting is it we, this time we got the countdown to glory didn't we um which you know which was the the 
like the pre- the pre-show to Bane for Glory, like the Cape Day show or whatever you want to call it. Um, it was an hour long. Uh, you know, it was on Access TV, but it was also being shown on Fight. I think it was meant to also be shown on the social media sites as well, but I don't know what happened there. I don't think it ha- ended up working out that way. I think it just was shown on Fight. I'm not sure if it showed on Impact Plus. No, it's it's not an impact plus. There were, there was a lot of technical issues with Bound for Glory and um the, the pre show. Some of some of the feeds on fights and, and access got cut off or something like that in certain states in America. Um so um Bound for Glory uh, we'll start off with a bit of a negative. Bound for Glory was riddled riddled with technical difficulties throughout. There was Which a few. It, there was definitely a few issues. Um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't. It didn't enjoy. It didn't spoil my enjoyment of the show. No, that, that's for sure. Be. It's like um, the curse of Bound for Glory. Something just, always has to go wrong. Yeah. It just seems <laughs> it. Some it, things just didn't work quite. You know, the stars weren't quite aligning for with some of the few technical issues that it, it, it happened. Um, however, I think that you know, it, I don't think it affected the show for me. I still really, really enjoyed it. I thought the matches were great. So that so. We we start, like I said, we started off with Count Down the Glory. We had a few glitches with the the social. It was supposed to be all over the play. That didn't quite happen, but we know it's definitely on Fight TV uh, for free. So everyone got to see that regardless, even if they didn't, you know, buy into the pay per view. Um, we we saw some uh, we saw a match on there, which was the Rascals um, versus the Deaners, um, which which actually was a really really good match. Um, we had a we had the we had basically like a panel kind of set up with um john burton who obviously um you know is a friend of uh, t and i as well um we had d lo brown on there so it was really nice to see d lo and we had madison rain on the on the panel now i thought that this set was really good i thought it looked really impressive did you it's it's not not something i've seen but um i like that they're like uh so i can't really comment much on it because it's uh, i did miss this I, okay. I did. I missed uh, Bound for Glory on the night after. I watched it the night afterwards because of uh, medical issues. Yeah. Okay. Well, the setup was really good. They had like um, it was sort of kind of almost set up like a like you would see like a, a sports. Yeah. You know, like, that's how like, I could thing. picture it. And it, it's... yeah, yeah. So it was really good. It had some really good lighting. It was all quite flashy. It looked really good. Um, like I said, you know, to begin with, it started off a little bit slow, but you know, it kind of got into it and it worked. Um, we then saw uh, some testimonials um, from Bret Hart, Mick Foley, um, some MMA guys uh, were, were giving Shamrock um, a load of testimonials. Obviously, they were holding out for The Rock. Um, uh, the, we then got the uh, the bonus match, which was the Rascals uh, versus the Deaners. And we had the um, commentary team of Matt Stryker and Don Callis. Now, I was like, when, when I saw it, I thought, yes, they're going to have Matt and Don do the commentary for the pay-per-view. Um, and I was like, yeah, this is going to be great. You know, even if it was Matt, Don and Josh would have been cool too, you know, but I just thought, yes, they're going to have Matt. It's going to be fantastic. Um, and they, you know, they called it, they called this match and it was, it was, I was like, this is good. You know, I, I'm down for this. This is going to be good. Um, uh, the Rascals lose. Now, the dealers get a win, which is great because, again, both of these both of these teams you don't you know they're they're either losing or they they get yeah. you know they win a couple and they get a title match or whatever but you know the deaners i don't think have had a title match yet um and you do see them lose more than you see them win so it so you weren't sure on this one who was going to get the win but what i will say is that you know recently obviously on the socials we've seen the rascals take away um anything related to impact wrestling on their um on their socials which would suggest to me that possibly um you know they're 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 seeing the end of their contracts out and then they're moving on i, I mean that's not um gospel that's my thoughts on on what i've seen on the socials and everything else that you know this could be a possibility that they're moving on now it sealed it for me because the deaners won against the rascals and i'm thinking right if the rascals win then they're going to move on they're, they're fine but they didn't they lost um and they and, and to be fair they lost quite emphatically the deaners you know they beat them well and truly beat them um which was you know don't get me wrong the rascals did get some offense in they looked good in the loss but um they did lose and it was a convincingly lost um and which, you know, for me was a little bit, of, you know, a little bit of a shame because instantly it said to me, oh, no, they're on their yeah. way out. 
And that to me is disappointing because I love the Rascals. I'm a big, big fan of the Rascals. I think for the last couple of years, they've been um, fantastic. I mean, they've been on like every week. It's very rare. They're yeah. on every pay-per-view. They're on every, every single so, week. So consistent. Very consistent in their characters. Um, and I'm totally sold by the Treehouse. And I think if they do go, I'm going to miss the Treehouse. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, that's going to be a real shame. So, so we get the bonus match anyway, which is obviously out there for free. If anybody was watching the, the countdown to glory, they weren't sure where to buy the pay-per-view. I'm sure that this match probably sealed it, sealed the deal. Um, and hopefully they got a few extra buys from it. Now, because that's obviously what it's for, you know. Yes, yeah, the buy-in, basically. Let's get some more buy-ins, you know. Um, now, and again, Matt and Don were great on commentary. Uh, and I was proper excited. I was like, yes, we're going to get striker and don on commentary it's going to be great um so that was good we then obviously had a little bit of a discussion about you know the different matches that were going on and this was sort of kind of going on all the way through this event um and then eventually we get the induction of uh the legend that is the world's most dangerous man ken shamrock this was done on the impact run so you know on the, with the backdrop and everything else yeah. Um, they, they'd obviously put like a podium up and uh, Matt Stryker was out there uh, basically giving us the rundown and boom there it is the the first time ever that uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson appears on Impact Television um, and it was a it, I thought it was a fitting tribute I think Rock did a really really good job it wasn't just three seconds you know it was a, a proper um, you know induction speech which I thought was um, really good. He was obviously in his back garden. Back. Um, we, whatever he's doing at the moment, he needs to be jacked. Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah, so he's looking jacked. Um, and, you know, it was just a beautiful speech. It was really, really lovely. And he thanked Ken and he told him he deserved it. He, you know, he mentioned Impact Wrestling several times during the speech, which was really nice. The words came out of the rock's mouth, um, which was fantastic. Um, and then we get a really nice speech from Ken um, where he sort of kind of talks about everything, including his past, um, you know, with WWE or WWF at the time. He spoke about Vince McMahon. Um, you know, he spoke about other competitors from the wrestling industry that he's worked with. Um, and I thought it was it was a really nice tribute. And he ended by thanking the fans um, because at the end of the day, without the fans, he wouldn't be there. Um, and I think. That was a great way to end. It was a great way to end. Um, my only my only thing with it was it was it was an induction into the Impact Hall of Fame um, or, you know, the TNA Impact Hall yeah. of Fame. He didn't really mention the fact that he was the first ever TNA world champion. He doesn't like to gloat. In, in you my know, opinion. He, did, he doesn't like to gloat. You know, I, I've spoken to him a couple of times online and he's, he's very humble. He is quite humble. He's very yeah. humble, and it, it, he's just 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 showing it then where he's doing the ceremony that it's 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 not about him. It, it's about the fans. It's about he's like he's like Tommy Dreamer. He's he's not someone that likes to, to brag about what they've done. He like yeah. he likes to just do it for the fans. I think he's a I think something he's a, that you got to respect Ken Shamrock for. Oh, definitely, definitely, and and you know the, you've got to face the facts. You know he is the world's dangerous man. You know he's proved it in MMA. He's you know UFC, in in WWF, uh, in in TNA, in Impact Wrestling at 56. He still can go, and we'll find that out later when we talk about uh, the Eddie and uh, Eddie and Ken match. Um, and you know I think it was it was just it was really nice it was a nice it was a nice way to sort of kind of kick off the bang for glory uh pay-per-view um so obviously once we get that over and done with uh we move back to the to the to the the the, the panel as a as I think they were classed as and there was a little bit more talking little bits you know how cool was that blah 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 kind of scenario and then Tim Burton uh intro introduces us into the um the pay-per-view you know, which was only seconds away. Uh, glory. So, um, yeah, then we can sort of kind of go silent a little bit. And then obviously we come into Bang for Glory. We get the, uh, you know, the little bit at the beginning, um, uh, which I thought was quite good. Colin, that intro was, good. was savage. Yeah, yeah was intro was, young, great. was brilliant. As always, you know, I mean, yeah. it, it, there's one thing that you can't deny. And that is that this company knows how to put together a cold opening to a show. Yeah. Right? Like, 
you know it doesn't matter whether it's a the impact weekly show or whatever they're so good at it um and you know what i think sometimes the issues that we get with the live events are because we don't do it enough you know like in reality how often do they get to practice um you know running a live event they don't do they you know it's like well it's it's it's, you know here we go live pay-per-view let's get it done you know what i mean like even the monthly specials that they're doing on twitch at the moment they're all going to be pre-recorded you know so they're eight they've got the time to take them apart edit them make sure they got the best camera angles you know um you know make sure that the the way that they're coming in and out of stuff is all graphic right and all that kind of stuff you know all the things that they can spend time and making sure it's perfect you know they they've got the time to do it but what when they're when you're running live you know it's there it's on the fly you know yeah cut to camera so and so cut the camera this you know cut to camera three cut to hard cam cut you know what i mean and it's all kind of all going on the fly um and you know sometimes you are going to get a few issues you know um and even if it's not a production issue it's a internet issue or something like that where they're streaming you know this thing's streaming live if there's issues created it's out of their control um you know, it just looks bad sometimes on them, it, but it's not actually their fault. No, um, it's not. Like everyone you know. likes to blame the company. It's just, oh, it's, yeah. just, it's just easier for the marks and the oh, mid marks to just, yeah. just go, oh, it's their fault, their shit. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. They're, they're amateurs. They're amateurs. You know, no, they're not. They're not amateurs. They know exactly what they're doing, you know, um, but they don't go live every week. You know, they're not going live every single week. So, you know, they sometimes there's things that they probably haven't owned out or whatever, or, or technical issues that occur that they might not necessarily need to, you know, they can't go, oh, that's that. Boom. Yeah, that happened last week. Boom. You know, it's kind of, you know, for me, that's what it is. So I tend to just, you know, I'm not really too bothered about stuff. like I'm like, oh, it's a live event. You know, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? These me things too. Happen. You know, these things happen. So I'm more interested in, in the content rather than necessarily the fact that there was a little glitch or, or anything like that, because these yeah. things happen. We can record a, a show and, you know, you could disappear for two seconds, you know, because, you know, the Internet's gone down for a couple of seconds. You know what I mean? So, yeah. it's you know, these things happen. It's just the way it is. We just we just deal with it, you know. We just gloss over it, move yeah. on. Let's That's just say, uh, let's just say, the the guys watching, they didn't ca- catch the first two attempts at the pilot episode for when we we, we first did this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were some issues there, also. But anyway. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's very true. Yeah, that's very true. That was very interesting. Um, and the and the fact that we we sometimes uh, the fact I you know I have to do the intro about three or four times before I get it right, um, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, so you know what I mean. But these things happen. You know, it's just the way it is. Um, by the way, I didn't have to do it three or four times today. I'm just saying. All right, I'm just saying. First time, first cut, first cut bison. That's what they call me. First cut bison. 100% but anyway, hundred percent. It's now yeah, it's beefalo no mate. It's oh, beefalo. Hundred percent pure beefalo. All right, oh, just yeah. just to keep the scumbag happy. Um, <laughs> you know, because we all know that beef isn't from a bison. We all know that. So, uh, but you know, like I said, I was using beef more as a metaphor um, for sort of you know having beef with somebody and all that kind of stuff. You know, being a bit healy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's a hundred percent pure beefalo okay beefalo 100% pure beefalo that's what it is yeah but anyway next time I get it wrong guys hit me with a share <laughs> that would be good yeah hashtag 100% pure beefalo let's get it out there <laughs> so it's all good um okay now I'm interested in anyone's comments with regards to the production issues that we've had you know that the, the, the show had or whatever please feel free to leave a few comments like I said you know it's live you know, on the odd occasion, you may have, a, you know, the hiccups you know, here or there. Just get over it, man. Move yeah, on. You know, look at Slammiversary. That was perfect. Yeah, Slammiversary didn't have any issues. You know, I think, you know, like you say, at the end of the day, sometimes these things happen and sometimes they don't. On this occasion, we had a couple. Get over it. Move on. The content was great. Um, so, OK, so we get into it. We get a great cold opening, which is fantastic. Um we then get the opening match. Now, I was actually surprised that this was the, the very first match because I, I thought it might have been the Gauntlet that was the first match. But they went with the opening match of the X Division title six-way scramble, um, which was uh, Jordan Grace, TJP, Willie Mack, um, Trey Miguel, Chris Bay, and, of course, the champion, Rohit Raju. Um, 
who the I am the most giving champion, the most giving uh, champion that they've had. What an opportunity giver he is! Um, and the bottom line is, you know, he's he's got to be one of my favourites on the roster. So I'm going to put the mocker skin, the mocker skin manimal over every single time. He is the legend. most improved superstar 2020. Yeah, to me, he's, 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 he's not. He's not. Tra- he's not tra- off that list for me. It's very he's still the really most improved superstar 2020. He is. Um, yeah, he's fantastic, and and I'm I'm so pleased that he's got the opportunities now uh, to really prove how good he is. I think it's fantastic. Um, now, so we get this match. It gets kicked off. It was a pretty good match. That was uh, amazing. Yeah, I thought it was a fantastic match. I mean, um, like I said, there was a couple of places where I thought the cameras were in the wrong place. And they missed a couple of little little uh, things that were going on. But other than that, uh, the match itself, I thought, was absolutely superb. Um, I really loved the... Um, uh, I, what I thought was really cool was when TJP was sort of kind of getting out, getting like like three or four people into the yeah. um into, into the submission move, which I thought was quite that good. Was fun. It just shows how, just how technically sound and just how innovative TJP is. He's one of... Yeah, I've said it before. He's one of the best technical wrestlers on the roster. And for him to pull things like that that off, you know, he's literally like a, um, it's like a human game of Twister. Oh, it's, he's incredible. It was just incredible. And yeah. it's almost like, I think he's like arching backwards. He had Jordan Grace in the headlock, he, an Indian death lock and two guys on the floor. It was, yeah. it was just insane. I was wondering when, when, when was it going to end? And then I think it was Rahit came in and knocked yeah. him over. But it was exactly. just so, so brilliant. I think, to give him, I think that, give him that massive standout spot because TJP isn't he, he likes to brag about his ability but he's not in the company to overshadow everyone too much he's, he's there to just put on a good show and he's doing exactly. that exactly he's doing a great job I think he's he's a fantastic talent and and I'm so pleased that TJP decided to stay around um because I know that when he first came in it was a bit unsure I think he was only on like a you know maybe a, a sort of you know two or three match thing and then and then like all of a sudden he sort of kind of then start he start more and more and more so i'm really really pleased to see that tjp is is decided to stay with the company he's, he's going to be a big part of it moving forward um he's a big star you know yeah, he's very well respected um the world over and in the locker room which is which is you know everyone appreciates him as a veteran and as an amazing athlete i think they all probably want to wrestle him um so you know it's, it's great to see um tjp in there giving it giving it the beans um I, the storyline itself the way that they built this storyline um over the last sort of kind of uh four or five weeks leading into bane for glory with the whole kind of like you know um yeah. rohit giving everyone an opportunity and and sort of kind of um you know always finding a way to retain um no whether that you know no matter how that happened yeah it's uh, like it's like eddie guerrero yeah it was, it was i thought it was great I thought it, it was great the way they did it. I know there's a lot of people out there that wasn't so keen and thought it was, you know, it was, it was rubbish and all that. But personally, um, I thought it was a fantastic way to build into this. And of course, what that then led to was the fact that every single, you know, person in that uh, in that match had a real thing they really wanted to get at, <laughs> at Rohit. You know, so it was a case of, you know, the, the moment where he's in the middle of the ring and like, oh, shit. Like everyone is a, <laughs> wanted to have a piece of him before they have a piece of each other, you know, classic storytelling moment. Um, and I think it worked really, really well. And of course, you know, we get to the end of the match, and what do we get? Well, equality. We get yes, that was fantastic. When he when he when he uh, double foot stomps her off the off the road to Jordan Grace, yeah. uh, lands on her, he shouts equality. I love it, you know. And and av- in fact, every single time um, he hit Jordan. Uh, yeah. he, he shouted equality, which I thought was was uh, you know that's attention to detail, right? You know that's fantastic storytelling right there. Um, you know, especially with all the grief that the the Jordan's been getting recently online and stuff like that, and just about having her in there, always a joke. You know, um, what's interesting is that you know in reality she's actually a similar size and everything. Um, in fact, she's probably stronger than half of the guys that are in there. Oh yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So. Um, I think actually she's a really good fit for the no limits X division is a perfect place to turn that into intergender, right? You well, could that, have that, that spine buster she did to Willie Mack, you know, Willie Mack's a, a nearly 300 pounds and she yeah. de- basically dead left him off the floor and slammed him like a really powerful spine buster. And yeah, that's not easy. That's not easy at all. 
So, you know, I think I, I, I definitely struggled to lift up Willie Mack, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's an incredible um, testament to, to, to that division um, and the fact that she's coming in there and basically holding her own against all those guys. Um, and they didn't they did not hold back. You know what I mean? They did not hold back. They went for it. You know, she went for it. They went for it. There was no holding back whatsoever. It was a great match. Um, I really, really enjoyed this match. And for me, um, I think if I was give it a star rating for me, it'd be a, it'd be a four star match. Without doubt, I think there was a couple of little bits and bobs in there, but you know, not didn't quite make it a five star, but it's definitely um, a four star match for me. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, and Rohit comes out the winner, which obviously makes it even better for me. What just what? What about yourself, Joe? What are you going? Yeah, with? I'd say for four as well. And Rohit, Rohit, um, knocking my, my prediction out out the ballpark and telling the person who I picked to win. That that put a big, that just made me think you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I picked. I thought it was fantastic. Um, me, um, I, I said to him um, online afterwards, you've been the, the guy that um, I, I picked to win, but the guys at T and I had 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 your back regardless. You know, you were the second choice. Yeah. Not, not not to make him like second best him, but of course he didn't take it that way. So you know, he, he, he knew, knew what I meant. Um, now, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, these guys, you know, they work incredibly hard. Every single one of them. Um, they all look fantastic. I mean, um, Chris Bay looked amazing. Uh, he, he's obviously been been proper getting himself jacked and looking great for this show. Um, you know, uh, Willie Matt looked good. You know, he looked he looked he looked trim. He looked good. He looked strong. Uh, Jordan looked amazing, as always. He's just a beefcake powerhouse he looked amazing um and of course you know you know and again you know everybody else they they just look great trey miguel looked great he moved amazingly fast um you know there was some incredible speed on display here there was amazing uh like screw i don't even know what it was but chris bay kind of like goes off the top rope does some sort of screw thing in the air and turns it into a cutter i think or or yeah or something like that it, it was it was an incredible move from chris bay um so there were some great athletic displays uh, from every single member of this match uh, today. So, you know, like I say, a good, solid four star match. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm really, really happy that uh, that the Moccaskin Manimal retains the giver of, uh, you know, the giver, the, the well, well, I forgot opportunities, the giver yeah. of opportunities, you know, walks away, gets a clean one, two, three absolutely superb i'm really looking forward to seeing where this one goes um who he you know moves on to now who who his next sort of kind of opponent's going to be uh for that title it's going to be it's going to be great so i'm really looking forward to that um so moving on um we then sort of kind of move on i think we get a little bit of backstage or whatever we then move on to, uh, uh, i think this is actually one of the one of the, where we had a slight technical issue here um uh, because i think as it sort of kind of goes to the back and you see everybody sort of mingling at the back they're all talking about the wedding and all this kind of stuff going on um you hear joss matthews uh say you know can we sort out the the you know these issues please yeah now, <clears throat> That they were having issues, their own issues on commentary, not not hearing, you know, from production or whatever. Um, but we hear it, you're not, you, you know, that his mic should have been turned off before then. <laughs> now, whose fault that was, I don't know. Um, then we move on to, um, you know, as it sort of kind of pans out, you get the the stuff going on backstage, and then we get the, you know, the restart of of Heath and Rhino. Um, yeah. You know that, for me, that was the biggest hash of the night um you know because it kind of spoiled that 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 moment um you know and made it you know almost not believable anymore because it wasn't continue we know that you know you just shouldn't it should never have happened <laughs> um so um but it did uh but however when they did get that promo going it was pretty good oh yeah uh, i think it was brilliant that they just stopped and started and they just carried on like nothing happened so it just shows how professional right and heath are you know they just did, didn't take it on board that's about an eyelid yeah, they just carried on like like it was nothing had happened. Promo was yeah. 
And obviously Heath got uh, Rhino, you know, um, riled up, uh, ready to give the gore. Um, so it was, it was, yeah, obviously the whatever that that was about. The pep talk did the job, and uh, Heath and Rhino were ready to go. They were ready to go. Uh, so I'm now excited. We've got the call your shot gauntlet. Um, and we get the fair, you know, we get obviously we get Rhino coming out first. You know, obviously he got pinned so by um, Hernandez, Hernandez um, on the previous show. Um, so Hernandez comes in at 20. We know that's going to happen. And we've got Rhino coming in on uh, number one. So Rhino comes in um, and, you know, big entrance looking great. Um you know, and again, you know, like we always talk about this, you know, Rhino looks so good. He doesn't look any different, does he? No. You know what I mean? Like, he really does look the same. Trent, um, Trent said as well, he just doesn't age. He, no. He put, he put a picture of him from like 20 years ago on, on Twitter to, to where he is now. He just doesn't doesn't seem to age. He just seems to get bigger. Yeah, he's a beast. <laughs> he is a beast. <laughs> he's literally um, the man beast. Yeah, he really is. Um, and then, of course, obviously, he goes in the ring and then we're waiting uh, waiting for the number two participant to come on to get this match going. Um, and it turns out to be Davare. Now, um, I think you say, I think it's Sean Davare. Um, now, he used to be known as Abdul Bashir back in the TNA days. Now, uh, do you remember him at all, Joe, or, or were you not watching at that point? I actually seen this guy live. Uh, 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 is it the name he came up with then? That was familiar. But um, okay. I, I, I've, I've, yeah, Plus, or, or I've, I've, I've not seen it seen um, that that far back on TNA's history to, to well, really Abdul, get to know him. Abdul Bashir was that was uh, an X division champion, um, you know, back in the TNA days. I think I'm trying to remember. I think it's probably back 2000 sort of 2006 2007 time. Um, I definitely. I mean, I've seen this guy live um, as Abdul Bashir I, uh, at the Impact Zone in Florida, um, and you know he's an he's a really good wrestler really really good um so i for me i'm like i really hope that this guy's around for a little while um uh, even if it's just a short run it'd be just it'd be cool to see him um get in the ring maybe maybe abdul is is going to be the uh the next challenger for for uh rohit you know as a, a yeah you know, as i know like, T- tjp's going in from at the moment but i'd like to see him take on rohit Raju at least uh, in his final appearance if he, if he moves on that would yeah. be that would be interesting. It would be, be, be good for a heat as well. Yeah, and and I gotta say, Davari was looking insanely jacked, um, you know, and uh, yeah, very defined. Is you know, good yeah, fair play to him. He obviously yeah. works really really hard on his body, so fair play. He looked great. Um, and, and and then obviously you know we got over over the next sort of kind of. You know, it's it, obviously they got going. The match got going. The bell goes off. They go. They start doing their thing. Um, you know, we see some good stuff from them. And then obviously, gradually, we start getting to see everyone introduced um, into this match. Um, you know, which eventually we sort of get down to the. Uh, we we get down to uh, another surprise entry, which I wanted to, which I want to discuss. I'm not overly, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because we could be here all night with this one because so much was going on. Um, you know, there was there was you know people getting you know thrown yeah. over all over. Brian Myers, Brian Myers coming out in tribute to Abyss and Tommy Jimmy coming that out in tribute cool. to Animal. Brian yeah. Myers eliminated the most people in the whole match. Yeah, you know, I thought. I didn't he was it seven or eight people? He threw it was over? at least seven. Yeah. And, and you know he's you know, he's pretty much matched Abyss's record for it in, in in one of the, one gauntlet match in 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 his first first time in one. Yeah, which is, which is interesting, and it's just just great to see Brian Myers really put on a strong performance. He, he's won me over really quickly, and then he's, Tom, he's Tommy amazing. Dreamer to come out and pay tribute to to um, an animal. That was well. cool too. Yeah, that was very cool. So I mean, what you know, what we got to see was some some. You know, some really cool stuff from lots of people. Heath came out. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but for me, the biggest, um, you know, the biggest pop for me had to be um, the entrance of uh, of James. Now, I, I have said all along that I felt James Storm was going to be at Bane for Glory. Um, and I am so pleased that he turned up. Is he there for the long term? You know, he, or, or, you know, I don't know. Um, I know that there was a picture shown literally like the following day that he was off to Ohio or wherever it was, um, you know, for the day. But just remember, there's three days of tapings um, for Impact, you know, and, and, and I know that they only um, 
you know, one of them, obviously, you know, one of the big one was obviously bound for glory. So they had all yeah. of that. So really, I think they only had two days of tape. And I did see somewhere that more in three weeks. So obviously they've only got, you know, three or four weeks worth out of this. So they obviously need to do some more. Um, you know, did James Storm fly, Storm fly back for day two of the tapings or day three of the tapings, as it were? You know, we don't know. We may have done. So who knows? We may see James Storm turn up at some point. Um, what I do know is that I was over the moon to see him. Um, I thought he looked incredible shape. Um, and, you know, he didn't look, a, he, he certainly doesn't look his age, does he? Uh, I was over, over, the, over the moon to see James Storm and immediately for, for, for following the match, I put out a massive tribute to him online, got a uh, thumbs up back from him, which is nice. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I love James Storm. He was one of the guys that got, got me watching TNA along with Eddie Edwards and DJZ and, and Tigre, you know, and guys like that, Jesse Goddard. So to see James Storm come out uh, in the match it w- it was was fantastic. He was... Um, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting it. I know there was there was like um, rumors going around before the match had started on the night that James Storm was in the building um, on, yeah. on Facebook and that, but that's on Facebook, so you don't take it to face value. Well, uh, it wasn't as you stated. It was James Storm. There was no, a couple of people saying that they were catching up with an old friend and all that yeah. kind of stuff, which I thought was really cool. And I think you know a lot of people started to speculate that it might be yeah. James Storm. Um, you know, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. We don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it was Abdul Bashir Davari. You, you know, yeah. we don't know. What we do know is that obviously Davari Abdul Bas uh, or you know did did appear in the Gauntlet. He was one of the two um, you know fresh faces, I suppose you could say, or returns um, along with James Thorne. He was obviously the return. That for me was the biggest one of the night. Um, I was I was absolutely over the moon to see him. Um, he did pretty well. You know, he got in the Gauntlet. He wasn't sort of like in there and then out. So which was good to see because to me that also suggests that he's maybe around for a little bit longer um so that was good it wasn't just a pop appearance and yeah. also it would have been a bit of a waste of money just to have him turn out for bfg when there's not even a crate so you're not even getting a pop value out of it are you there's nothing oh, no. james so got the biggest pop, pop around the internet oh that's, definitely without that's, doubt yeah he that's what i've said buzz. to him you know he was, so, it's just so good to see him back he got people buzzing for at least three days afterwards well, it was, it was absolutely superb. And uh, I'm, I, for one, I'm over the moon and I hope he's back uh, for, for the long term. Um, it would be great to see him do something. And I've always said, I honestly believe um, someone like James Storm is the perfect person to bring back if you want to bring some kind of faction in. Yeah. You know, he could be a leader of some sort of kind of like revolution, like revolution, pardon the pun, like he did before, or DCC, that kind of style, even if it's not the same name, you know. But there's certainly things that, that he could do, which I think would be pretty amazing because he's so good when it on the amazing in the ring um and you know like i said he, he's a great leader of something yeah. you know which i think would be which would be great to see um now one of the other things that came out of this match was that Heath clearly got injured yeah he, now, i think it's, it's been a hernia or something that, that was that's been the diagnosis but he wasn't was injured i have seen i've seen a few different bits and bobs being posted around it was a hernia etc you know uh and he may be out for a few weeks you know maybe a month um okay that's fine you know um if it is then great um uh, you know hopefully well i say great I, I mean it's not great that he got injured but it's great that if it's something that can heal fairly quickly that's good news um but you know at the end of the day you know you could tell that it happened and i think you know you could almost see where it happens as well yeah um, but I think it was going to come down to Heath versus Sammy, not Rhino versus Sammy. I think, and so, yeah. and so Sammy saw it and Rhino saw it, and so they just they made the decision to take Heath out right there and then. So, um, great, great, great ring awareness from both of them. And again, it just shows that Sammy Callahan and Rhino are professional enough to, to make that happen rather than yeah. have it go down to Heath versus Rhino or, or right. something like that. So it was, and there was a lot of talk, wasn't there, prior to. Um, bang for glory as well that that you know sammy didn't have anything so of course nobody even thought nobody even suggested that he was going to turn up in the gauntlet did they no nobody nobody said that nobody said that so um it was interesting to see sammy turn up in that um obviously hernandez turns up um you know falaba was in there we get that that little story um you know where the, the money gets ripped <laughs> off him and oh, i don't know he, he throws it out he goes to 
Fala basically eliminates himself <laughs> to get the money, runs the money, and then Hernandez eliminates himself. Um, obviously, the £105 means more to him than the shot at the world title. Um, so, you know, yeah, so that storyline obviously gets... Uh, gets forwarded through that they've eliminated those two people they're gone um but eventually we end up with the final four don't we um which was i believe sammy um rhino you got to help me out here because i, can't I remember. think it, it was sammy rhino heath and james storm i think or was it was uh, heath in there i thought heath was eliminated by him no it, it came down to um heath and sammy and, and rhino and then okay he, he's got eliminated by sammy callahan Oh, I'll tell you who else we saw. Swoggle. Yes. Yes, I forgot about Swoggle. Brian so, yes, Myers so... just made shot work of him. <laughs> yeah, he got rid of him straight away. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, um, from what we just saw uh, on, on, on Impact from last night, we, we, we now know that Swoggle's a bit pissed off. That. But, so, um, yeah, so that was done. That was short work made of that. Um, you know, and then we end up with the final four. First one to be eliminated, straight away, Heath. Um, like you said, we now know why. You know, at the end of the day, the guy was injured. He's not. He was. He was. He needed the ropes to even help himself stand up. Yes. Yeah. Um. So you know that he gets eliminated. Um. And he was clearly injured because you know on the outside of the ring, you you know you sort of caught a glimpse every now and again that they were obviously you know dealing with it. Um. So he was injured. We end up. You know. We then end up with the final two, uh, being Sammy um and rhino and of course what happens we get the gore we get the gore um and and rhino finishes off uh sammy in quick fashion uh with the gore 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 back at a character so it was really cool um so um, I thought that was a really great finish, and clearly it was something they thought up on the fly. At the end of the day, Heath or Rhino had to win because Heath needs a contract, and yeah. Rhino can't go anywhere. Right, no. so um, so it was going to be one of the two. I think it was probably initially going to be Heath, um, but of course then we end up with uh, with Rhino. So it's all good. Yeah, well, so, when he uh, when Heath got eliminated, it also had me wondering if, if Sammy Callahan would pull the ultimate upset. Oh, could you imagine if Sammy yeah. Callahan did actually win? That would have been that would have been awesome too. I would have been like, "Whoa!" Um, that would have been the biggest shock I think of the night if that had happened. It really would have been, um, you know. But would he have given that shot to Ken? That's the thing. Would yeah. he have done that? You never know. Um, but uh, yeah, so so interesting stuff. We end up with Rhino winning. He, you know, holding the the the, the cup aloft. Uh, you know, he goes away with his call the shot um when's that going to be well we'll have to find out won't we um and with the, the bottom line is is it going to be tag is it's, it going to be singles yeah. oh it's going to be a tag it's going to be a tag if you tag and that's that like yesterday yeah they named that last night so it's interesting to see how that panned out but they were also playing on Heath's injury last night as well yeah so which was, uh, i'm glad they didn't write him off the television that they managed, they managed to put, just put play on it so yeah no, it's, I think they'll good. be playing on it for a couple of weeks. Uh, I think they'll be playing on that for a couple of weeks now. So um, probably through this entire set of tapings, because once obviously we got through this set of tapings, potentially at the next set of tapings, he could be ready to go, even if it's even in a in a you know a small way. You know, yeah. you never know. Um, so so I thought that that again, I thought this was a was a pretty solid. Uh, Gorton the match like I said there was a lot of thinking on the fly they managed to get through it um but I enjoyed it did you I loved it I loved I loved it uh when, yeah it was like fighting fighting out, out out the out the ring as well you know Tasha Seals and the veil were beating the crap out of each other out there yeah. and so the, the and the knockouts that came in had a good good show and Ty Valkyrie and Jessica Havoc were sending people flying it, it was just such a solid match for everybody who got involved Oh and yeah, then, definitely. It, and, it, it, had the, it had the comedy spots. It had the, the drama. It had everything. It, it was a five star match for me. It was it was probably one of the best matches of the night. Yeah, and I think what was interesting. The other thing I was going to say with this one as well is what they managed to do with this match as well is get people on screen on the pay per view even if they weren't in a match. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? So Havoc was in there, but Nevea came down by her side. So she was on the show, but even though she didn't really, she didn't have a match. Um, and I think the same with... Uh, Grace Mary and Johnny Bravo as well. That's right. Yeah, they came down as well, didn't they? So, you know, I think, you know, it gets people on the... It got, it got people on the pay-per-view, um, you know, that weren't necessarily in the ring. Um, and I thought that was I thought that was really good, the way they did it. Um, but yeah, no, fantastic. Some great stuff. Um, I did enjoy it. For me, this was a solid three-star match. Um, you know, I thought it had some drama in there. They did really well in the sense of you know, covering the injury angle, you know, they changed things up on the fly. Um, I think they did a really good job. How about yourself? Uh, I have five star for me. Really? I was was so, I was just so so entertained by the whole map, the whole match and everything. It was so much things you pick, you could pick up on without noticing throughout the match. It just made it really, really enjoyable. Okay, good. Okay. Well, Joe's going with five star on this one. Don't forget guys, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, you know, you don't have to give it a star rating. I mean, we're just sort of kind of throwing stuff out there on our thoughts. Uh, but please don't forget to leave us a comment on this match. So, so far we've had the, uh, you know, we've had the the, the first match, the six-way scramble. Any any comments on that? And then you call your shot, Gaultner. Please don't hesitate to leave us a few comments on that. Um, we're interested in your thoughts. Um, so we then move on to the build-up to the EC3 versus Moose Undisclosed um location match um now the build up to this i thought was really good the way they sort of tied everything together was really cool the montage was good as always these things are always pretty solid always pretty good the way that they they build everything up um we then obviously see moose walking into a undisclosed uh venue which to me just looked like a, a warehouse possibly oh, yeah um there were some bleachers there uh, and they actually had like an entrance hall to it as well so I'm thinking that wherever that is, it's probably uh, some uh, people actually leave us some comments because some of you guys might recognize it from a, from an indie promotion. So I'm assuming that that's probably a setup of some indie promotion, um, you know, in Baltimore or wherever it may be. I don't know. But I, mean, I think that's where Moose was apparently heading um, yeah. was to Baltimore. But it could have been anywhere. At the end of the day, it was just a, it was a cinematic match. Um, but to me, that's what it looked like. Um, we had. Obviously, we had the EC3 minions um, all around the ring, um, sort of kind of with the masks on, and you couldn't see their faces. They had the T-shirts and the hoodies up and all the rest of it. So the minions were there, which is great. Um, and, of course, Moose is coming in wearing all white. Well, as soon as we see all white, we know there's going to be blood um, coming from somewhere. So he comes in wearing all white, <clears throat> shouting his odds off. Where is EC3? I want he wants EC3. Blah blah blah. And then of course, obviously we you know like I said, we know that this is going to be a cinematic match. Um, we get the music and all the rest of it. We get the the sort of like the hums and um, yeah, the bang, banging on the ring was a great yeah. the extra atmosphere. It exactly. was it was yeah, it was it good. Was, yeah, I, it, I thought it, it was, was good. Yeah, it, it was good. It wasn't wasn't uh, mind blowing, and it was a bit anticlimactic given all the build up. To, to be honest, for yeah, me, possibly. but but it set Moose in the right direction now. And EC3's done what he said he's going to do. He, he's not there to put himself over. He's there to control his narrative and erase his erase his history. And yeah. if you guys haven't um, seen the promo he did after after the match, go to his Facebook page and look look, look at the promo he did. He shoots down everything he's done you know, from the WWE to, to um, AEW to, to uh, everyone and everything. That's wrong with the industry. EC3 points it. Yeah. it out right I'm there. Gonna say, I'm going to say now, I believe that this is all leading to a ZNA faction, right? I honestly believe this. It's, I think Eddie's going to be next to, on the on the EC3 target list. Um, I think... This was all about bringing the beast out in Moose. Yeah, exactly. It was, it, you know, turning Moose into what he's supposed to be. You know, Moose, Moose hasn't been a, a top-level contender since since Lashley. He's, he's had he's had big matches and that, but you know, EC, EC3 could see that. You know, since since Lashley was there, Moose has really slowly, uh, slowly dripped off the, the ladder. Exactly. I th- I think the bottom line is that this was all about you know, elevating Moose to, to the next level. And I think it's all about building some kind of super faction um, that, that obviously EC3 is going to be the head of. Um, I believe that a hundred percent. I believe that that's where this is going. It's interesting to see that 
um, we believe that something's going on with regards to um, Ring of Honor. Now, you know, is is somebody from Ring of Honor going to come to Impact Wrestling? Is EC3 bringing someone to Impact Wrestling? Right? You never know. You know, could it be the Briscoes? Because there's there's a couple of dream matches that we're looking for with the Briscoes. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this all pans out. Um, I don't know whether. I mean, I'm not saying they necessarily come. They're 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 coming to Impact full time, but they may be coming in with regards to this storyline. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how all of that pans out. Um, but clearly, like I said, we got EC3 blood. We got it all over the white. Um, you know, we wanted the blood. We got some blood, which is great. Um, I, you know, we got prop. You know, we obviously we got we got stuff involved, chairs and all sorts of bits and bobs got involved, which is good. Um, you know, I, I thought the the music choices was really good. Um, oh yeah, the fourth, fourth thing they always get right is atmosphere and music. I thought the atmosphere and the music was really good. Um, and, you know, you knew all oh, this is going to be a sinister bit and you knew that this was going to, you know, you just knew it was going to be good. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of cinematic matches. Um, I accept them for what they are and I enjoy them for what they are. You know, was this the best cinematic match I've ever seen? No, but it was good. It was solid and I enjoyed it and it breaks up your pay-per-view, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you put them in, but you don't build a pay-per-view around it. You know, it, it's it you could put something in and that's it. It's done and dusted and you move on to back yeah. into the ring. Um, you know, uh, and again, I don't think it was too long either. I thought it was just the perfect length. Um, and I like the way that Impact used the cinematic matches because they do it very infrequently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the last one we had was Sammy Callahan versus Ken Shamrock. Which was back months at, ago. Back, back at Rebellion. Yeah. And so, you know, I think it works if you don't overuse it. I think that's the bottom line. It creates something different. You know, at the end of the day, we, you know, what we do is entertainment. It creates a different level of entertainment for the viewer. And I, I, I like it. And, it, and it also, it's also a different creative outlet as well for the guys and for, for the production team, et cetera, to get their teeth into, do something a little bit different. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, it's not the best one I've ever seen, um, but it entertained me um, while I was watching it. You know, I wasn't like, oh, wow, this is amazing. But I was entertained watching yeah. it. And, and I'm happy with that. Um, and of course, the interesting point at the end was obviously EC3 was trying to get the beast out of Moose. Um, and at the end, when he knocks him out, he, uh, you know, basically with the belt um moose says thank you to ec3 right so he, he's obviously realized what ec3 yeah. was doing too at that moment moose so, has controlled his narrative and yes. he's, he's enlightened if yeah we, he's, if that's the right way to, to personify moose now because he's he, not like you have some spiritual god he's, he's a wrestling god yeah but he's not a spiritual man but he's, he's, right. he's enlightened he's got control of his narrative again He's, he's there he's got control and it's interesting to see again how this one moves forward um you know and and again like i said we saw this past tuesday uh that obviously moose is now going for that 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 impact world title even though he believes it's very it's secondary um but we're going to see a willie mac uh match up there aren't we willie mac and yeah. moose so that, that's going to be interesting i think unfortunately for for willie i think moose is going to make short work of him uh in the mood that he is now but let's see how that pans out um for next week's episode of impact wrestling um so yeah so i think it was all good um you know we get moose winning he then leaves and then we get the minions getting into the ring lifting up lifting up ec3 and taking him away you know all that kind of stuff very in very godlike fashion um which i thought was was interesting so he's, he's sort of kind of leader of a cult as opposed to it to yeah you know what i mean so i thought it was interesting um so again for me three stars uh yeah, no, three for me as well yeah three stars um you know yes i enjoyed it um, was it the best cinematic match no uh but yes it was entertaining so and and it you know it's set it's done what it needed to do you know it's brought moose uh into into the beast that he needs to be he is moose so he needs to be a beast right yeah uh and go for the real titles so interesting that's sort of kind of uh yeah that's where that one's led so that's all good so that's ended uh we then get the 
build up to the Eddie and Shem- Shamrock match. Um, now, for me, I'm an Eddie fan. Um, so I was like, OK, this is this is potentially going to be um, solid. But is it going to be that great? I mean, like I say, regardless of how amazing Shamrock is and, you know, or has been, um, he is still 56 years old. So against a guy who's like arguably in his prime. Oh, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, how's this match going to pan out? And of course, we know that um, Ken has got got the, uh, the, 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 well, I don't know what what do we want to the, the, the despicable Sammy Callahan in his corner. I think that's all we can. Oh, say. Sammy's a, Sammy's a good guy, um, really. Oh yes, of course he is. He's a good guy. You know, he had nothing to do with any of the stuff that was going on to Eddie. <laughs> nothing. Uh, but anyway, um, so it was interesting. So all that sort of kind of like pans out. Um, the match gets going, and what we see is basically Ken giving Eddie uh, a lesson in MMA. Yeah. Right. Um, to a degree. Uh, so, you know, you could tell that he was he was grinding him. He was he was trying to really get him on the mat, get him into, you know, the the mat holds and, and everything else, MMA stuff. Not a massive. Uh, I don't know uh, all the names of the holds that they were. They were that Ken was trying to get him in. But you could tell that it was it was reminiscent of, of his his old uh, UFC days or MMA days um, where he would literally. Uh, get people on the mat into a hold and hold them for like 20 minutes. Oh yeah. He's, um, he's, he's a submission machine. Oh my he's, God. He's, he's, yeah. d- he is deadly, deadly in the ring. If, if he wants to be. And it, so, so we have Eddie Edwards, the fighter versus Shamrock, the submission specialist. And Eddie Edwards was even trying to do what, one, one up on him with like Boston crabs. And, yeah. you know, so Eddie Edwards w- wasn't afraid to, to hold back. And um, it was just it was it was a good back and forth match. It started yeah. off. Uh, well, it started, it started off quite slow and, 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 and it was all very much Ken um, yeah. uh, getting in all his offense. And, and you could tell that, that Eddie was getting worn down. I, I guess the, the plan was to wear Eddie down as much as you can. You know, he's a young guy full of energy. Um so he gets him in there, and that's the plan going forward. I thought this – I'm going to say this now. I thought this was a great match, right? So um, I think for a pure wrestling fan, um, this was a really, really good match, okay? It told an amazing story uh, in the ring, um, the back and forth stuff. So we started off with, like I said – Ken giving it the, you know, getting him grounded. And that was gone on for a good five minutes where they, they sort of kind of, he was, he was grounded basically. The difference obviously in a, in a, in a wrestling ring is, you know, you only need to get your foot on a rope or, you know, something yeah. like that. you have to break a hold, you know, obviously in MMA that doesn't happen. So it's a completely different. So it's a lot easier for Eddie to get out of this stuff. Um, so eventually, although um, Ken kept getting him, you know, tied up and kept wearing him down, Eventually, we get Eddie getting in some offense. This is when the thing speeds up. Okay, so we get, you know, this starts to speed up a bit. We also see Eddie, you know, trying to get some submission moves in. You know, basically trying to prove to Ken that, you know, he's he's also, you know, pretty handy when it comes to submissions. Like you said, the uh, the one leg Boston Crab, he got into that. There was a few other bits and pieces he was doing as well, uh, which was trying to do that. But of course, you know, you know, Ken was coming back. Um, so we had that story being told, you know, Ken was dominating. Eddie was going to come back with the heart and the passion of a lion, you know, and uh, then then Ken gets back on top for a bit. So, you know, and, and eventually we end up, obviously, um, you know, well, well, we end up the lights going out, don't we? Just as everything's going in Eddie's favor, Sammy's yeah. on the ring. Sammy's in the ring, pressing his button. It all goes dark. Um, the lights come back on. You've got Sammy there with the baseball bat, which of course is the 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 offender of the uh, the the what I call back gate, um, which I mentioned on the press pass the other night. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, Sammy <laughs> Sammy replied when I called it back gate. Oh, 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 back gate. Oh, oh. Uh, I I was <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, so obviously he's there with the offending bat, uh, but also Eddie has got. You know, Kenny the Kendo stick. Oh yeah, it's good to see Kenny again. So and Kenny the Kendo stick was there. Obviously, Ken Ken's like probably no idea what the fuck's going on, um, but he knows that he's in the ring. Um, and then obviously, Sammy decides to go for Ken. Uh, sorry, go for Eddie. 
Uh, but Eddie manages to duck out of the way and, and go for the midriff with the with Kenny, the kendo stick, which, of course, then takes Sammy out of uh, out of play just like that, which is fantastic. Um, and then, of course, you know, at the end of the day, Ken ends up getting uh, Eddie into the ankle lock. And of course, uh, we end up with the uh, with the Ken win with the submission move um, from from Ken. Yeah, um, I was actually surprised at this. I, th- I thought Eddie was going to win. Me too. Um, I thought it was going to be one of those sort of kind of like passing the torch um, things. Um, and I thought this might actually have been the last time we saw Ken. Um, but clearly it isn't. Um, and that's not a bad thing. So uh, it's all good. Um, but obviously, um, Sammy's involvement kind of caused a distraction, um, which then allowed Ken to get the get the ankle lock in and, and win the match. Um, so it's not necessarily a clean win uh, because obviously Sammy got involved. So, um, you know, that's in Eddie's favor for sure. But I think this was a great match. I, I really enjoyed it. And I think if you're a pure wrestling fan, you will have enjoyed this match. Yeah, it's, this uh, is like the second time I've seen Eddie Edwards submit, and the the back and forth and the way it ended just just it's set it up. Like it's it's not over. And like um, I thought I thought Eddie Edwards was going to win, and him and Shamrock were going to hug it hug it out, like pass the torch, and then Sh- Sammy Callahan would go in. Yeah, jaw jacking with Shamrock, and then Shamrock would just knock him out, and then it would lead to Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan going forward. But it seem, it seems to be going in a different different direction, which is. Um, is it's looking a lot more interesting for the world title now. Well, I think what they've done is they've given us a swerve there because I think we were all thinking that this was going to lead to to an Eddie and yeah. Sammy Sammy feud. It still might. Um, it still might. But what it had, but what it seems to have done is is led to possibly um, Ken chasing after the world title now after he's proved by beating Eddie that, that he's the man. You know, kind of thing. He is the most world's most dangerous man. So um, yeah. So we then move on. Um, and I, I'm conscious of time. Do you realize that we've been talking for over an hour already? Oh, yeah. Uh, we're about halfway through. Um, so obviously then we, we then get into the uh, tag title match, uh, which is Ace and Fulton versus the Good Brothers versus the North versus the Motor City Machine Guns. Now, we get the entrances going on. The North come in, everything else. Then obviously the Motor City Machine Guns get introduced um and all of a sudden josh alexander pile drives um alex shelley uh on the on the ramp um and takes him out i love um, this for i love this and i said to josh alexander afterwards that was one of the, that was absolutely amazing and, it's just, and, it was totally unexpected i never expected that <laughs> at all yeah i you know you, you think you'd expect the north to, to come out and, and uh, jump everybody but the fact that he, he, he took alex shelley out because um, apparently there was rumours going around that Alex Shelley was a bit was injured before the match had started, so this is a way to knock him off completely. Yeah, which is, is fair enough. But the way the way that they did it, rather than just like punching backstage and I'll just leave him flat out on the ring, Josh like Josh Alexander literally destroy him on the on yeah. the ramp because just make Josh, an example of him. Yeah, Josh Alexander is absolutely terrifying when he gets going, and that oh, was geez. he absolutely brutalised him, didn't he? Yeah. He brutalised him at that point. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, that was that done. And then, of course, we had the, the dilemma of, you know, what is Saban going to do? Is he going to go back with his, with his uh, you know, his, his tag partner and, you know, forfeit the title? Or what was going to or is he going to go for it? Of course, he's going to go for it, isn't he? So, you know, we get uh, basically we get well, it's now a handicap match, isn't it? Because we've now got one half of the, uh, the, the tag team champions. Uh, in Chris Saban against the other three full tag teams. Um, and of course, what was, what was going to happen? Well, you know, Chris Saban was clearly going to get an absolute ass kicking, um, uh, you know, initially, uh, which he did. Um, he was, he was getting an absolute beating. Um, and, uh, you know, he did get in some offense, obviously he did come in and we did get some really good moves and we did get some bits and bobs coming in from that. Um, but you know there was some some really interesting stuff. Um, I th- I think that the North um, really runs shot over um, over Saban at that point, and then obviously Ace Ace and Fulton they were looking awesome. I mean they came in they they look really really badass. Uh, I I thought you know I thought Fulton is just such a such a strong yeah like he really is a beast you know and he's one of the only guys on the roster I think that can make um, the big LG. Um, you know, uh, stumble because yeah. I mean, yeah. 
yeah, let's face the facts. I mean, um, you know, the big LG is a, he's a he's a big dude. He's a big dude and he is jacked. I mean, he's strong. He's massive. Um, and, you know, it's, it's going to take. It's going to take a big dude to, to, to put this guy out. Um, I thought Carl Anderson put on an amazing show. Um, and, you know, and in the end, of course, the big LG owns Fulton, didn't he? He absolutely <laughs> owned him at that, that moment. But I thought Carl Anderson really, really looked really good in this match. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on Carl Anderson? It, it was good to see Carl Anderson get a bit, a bit more offense in because um, I've, not, I've not seen a lot, a lot of him. In the in the ring, um, even when the tag matches, he's, he's mostly been in and out, in and out, really quickly. So so he got a lot more in in the match, which is a good thing to see because it, it's um, got me a bit my attention drawn to the good brothers a bit more. This oh, is, yeah. it, it's it's a match I want I want to watch again. Yeah, I mean, a lot, Carl, a lot happens. In the... I, I think Carl because of his size, you know, yeah. he's, a, he's he's sort of kind of a little bit smaller. He's, I mean, I wouldn't say he's he's about a similar size to Ace Austin, I think. So yes. Yeah. Um, but because of his size, he's very quick. Um, he's ever so quick. He can put on a lot of stuff, and he's very clean. Have you noticed that? He's very clean in the ring. Yeah. Um, and, and I and I think that is, you know, that is a, you know, he's great. He's very very good at what he does, right? Um, and and obviously with the big LG being as big as he is as well, I mean, you've got a beast. You know, you've got a beast. You've got a, you know, you've got a good combination here, because uh, you've got a powerhouse and you've also got this sort of kind of, you know, speedy, yeah. technically sound. This, it, it, this is one of the reasons why I thought Ace Austin and Folsom were going to win, because yeah. um, then then have them versus the Good Brothers, because they're quite evenly matched. Again, you know, that would be an amazing one on one or or two on two or whatever you want to call it. It'd be an amazing tag match, definitely. Um, now Saban then gets on fire. I mean, he's he, he, I'm not going to lie. I thought Saban's performance was fucking incredible, right? In this match, I thought he was amazing, um, and really showed. I mean, God, the guy's in his forties and he moves like he's 22, right? Like moves so well. Such a great performer. Got so much respect for Chris Saban, um, a total TNA legend and a total turned into a total Impact legend as well. Now um, he almost pinned um, Ace Austin at one point. Uh, as well did you catch it? it was like two and a half yeah almost almost got him um but you know there's no thing taken away from the fact that the north looked incredible in this match right yeah, it, do you not agree like they did they outshone everybody in yeah, this match they they, they 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 deserve the win and um you know especially after losing the title so quick um, quickly after slamversary i was um as I said to, to Josh Alexander and Ethan Page, you know, if they face Austin and Fulton, don't win it because they were the guys I had ch- um, um, picked. If you guys win, that's, that's no skin off my back. I'm going to be over the moon for you. Uh, yeah, Josh, I, I, Josh, Josh, Josh Alexander gives me a uh, show of appreciation for that too, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the bottom line is, at the end of the day, you've got you've got some great young talent in there. You know, I mean, you've got you've got Ethan and and Josh who are the longest reigning Impact World Champions of all time. Um, you know, and they deserve you know to to be back in there with that. You know, they 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 had they basically you know they they took the 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 Impact Tag Division and held it on their back and they ran with it for for like over a year. Um, you know, so I think it's great to see the see them walk away um, as the as the champions uh, once again. Um, but there was a bit of shenanigans around this because obviously oh, yeah. the ref was distracted and uh, Ethan hits. Um, who did he hit? I've forgotten who he hit now. I think it was Saban he hit. Or, or... He did hit Saban, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he hit Saban with the belt and then obviously... Um, no, he didn't. Who did he hit? It wasn't Saban, was it? It was Saban or Carl uh, Anderson. And I know it wasn't Ace Austin or Fulton. I don't think they were. I think they were knocked out somewhere. Okay. Well, either way, someone gets hit by the belt, rolled <laughs> up, and we get a a, a a a win for the North. Um. So we get a hit. We get one, two, three. Josh Alexander, one, two, three. Boom, done. The North become uh the brand spanking new um Impact. Tag team champions. Yeah, this is um, a match. A match I have to watch again. I don't it, think people saw this coming, though, did they? I really no. don't. I really don't. I think they uh, loads. Of, I think most people assumed that the Good Brothers tonight was their night. They were going to walk away with the tag titles, um, and it didn't happen. It was the North, and and again, a good swerve, I think. A very good swerve. And he, he, Ethan Page on last night, he really rubbed it in their faces, which was good. It's good to see Ethan Page calm down a bit more and back into, you know, a bit. 
back into all ego rather than rather than really really pissed off. It's yeah. So so good to see to see him really really rip into everybody. That um, the north of that outside everyone and proved everyone wrong and especially like not knocking down Scott and was saying these guys are a bad investment. You just wasted all this money on these guys and they couldn't because they couldn't get the job done. Yeah, exactly. And it just erupted um, into a huge fight then, and that was it was just so good to see. so you know where where the tag division's going there from there. But clearly, we're going to now see a feud between the Good Brothers and the North, and I think that's exactly what we've been waiting for. Um, you know, and exactly what you know I'd said to a couple of people when they were going, "Oh, why are you giving why are you giving this match away for free?" Um, you know, the the and the go home show before this. Um, you know, and I'm like, "Well, neither of them's going to win. Nobody's going to win that match, and if they do, it's going to be dirty." You know what I mean? So yeah. You know, it's it it. This is to give you an idea of what to expect in the future. It's like a, you know, it's, it, you know, it, it, foreshadowing or whatever you want to call it. That's what they were doing. They were giving you a little taster of what's going of what's to come. Um. So you know, and there we go. One, two, three. Josh Alexander, you know, pins whoever it was. I can't remember. Uh, to become the, uh, you know, second time. Um, you know, for their second run now as the tag team champions, which is fantastic. Uh, over the moon for those guys. I think that's really good to see. Um, okay, so for me, four stars. Four stars for me too. Fantastic. Uh, only because I really I need to watch it again to, to really to take everything in. So it might go up. It might go. Well, it won't go down, but it might go up. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. All right. Don't forget to leave us your comments, your thoughts on this match, guys. Um, you know, we are interested to hear what you think. Um, yeah, definitely. This, this was a, I think this was a good match. I really enjoyed it, um, and I and I, I'm looking forward to seeing where this tag division goes from here because at the end of the day, we've got some incredible teams um, at Impact Wrestling, so it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. I think, and I'm really looking forward to that. Now, we then moved on. Um, I've actually written down on my notes here. Love that match. Four stars. Uh, so yeah, so fantastic. Um, okay, so. We then move on. We've got the Knockouts title match, um, which, uh, you know, is a lot of people's dream match. This is this is uh, Diano versus Kylie Ray. Um, now, they build it all up. You know, we get we get all the build up between the two. Um, Diana gets introduced to the ring and I'm thinking, OK, here we go. You know, this is going to happen. Um, and because there had been some rumors leading up to this already that something was going down. There was a there was a possible issue related to Kylie. Um, but, you know, nothing had been, you know, said, uh, you know, for definite. So Deanna comes out, um, you know, they, they play Kylie's music. She's nowhere to be seen. Um, and then uh, Deanna gets up the mic, gives it the open challenge. Um, and the music from the Undead Bride hits. And we get the incredible... Too young, um, and what an entrance! Oh, shit, it's very music doesn't sit, doesn't, doesn't send chills down your spine. Too young, will yeah, fantastic, mate, fantastic. And you know, whether this was the way it was planned to be or not, I don't know. Um, but you know, I for one am absolutely over the moon to see Sue Young back. How about yourself? I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I we expected Sue Young to come back on the night, yeah, well, and, I was, yeah, and, and the way Diana Prado. Um, sw- swung the um, everything together to say, oh, it's, it's typical that she's Kylie Ray's not going to show up. So whoever comes out, come along and beat you. Yeah. And her her, rea- her reaction when Sue Young come down, she was absolutely terrified. And Kim Kimberly's almost hiding. She's almost hiding behind Kimberly. Yeah. And uh, you know, so Diana Diana I don't think I don't think anyone expected Sue Young to come out. Of course, Kimberly wearing her uh, Halloween uh, kind of dress there, this, this skeleton dress. That was quite cool. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting to see 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 that turn up. So so Sue Young comes down to the ring, um, and frankly, she dominated Diana Perazzo initially. Um, she absolutely dominated her, didn't she? Oh, it was it was a, I, it started off strong for Sue Young, and then it swung back in Diana's favour, and then it, it was it evened out. So it was it was it was a, a great match, regardless of what had happened, and. It yeah. was fantastic. It, yeah. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously, the rumours were rife with regards to where the hell was Kylie Ray. Um, again, you know, I don't want to speculate on it uh, because, you know, we just don't know. Nothing official has come out from Impact Wrestling. Um, and, you know, we could speculate all we like. At the end of the day, she wasn't there. Yeah. 
that's it. And I'm sure, you know, sooner rather than later, we will find out exactly what's going down. Um, I know that last night, this past this past week on Impact, I know that they, um, you know, they they addressed it. You know, maybe Sue had attacked her. Yeah, and that's why she didn't arrive. You know, I don't know. I know they addressed that. They didn't say anything like that on the night. Uh, it was just where the hell's Kylie? Yeah, that was on, it. On, really. on the night, they didn't say anything out of respect to Kylie Ray. Um, so something had she, she'd gone to, to Michigan on the night with with everybody, and before the match had started, she she just disappeared or, or she she'd gone. So she yeah, so, she'd spoken to someone out back before the match had started. Yeah, so I don't know, but again, we don't want to speculate because we have no idea um, what what's happened. I'm like I said, I'm sure sooner or later we will find out. We all yeah. we know is she was in nashville that's all we know um and uh yeah and and she didn't turn up for a match but sue young did so um and and what well i mean you know diana did get some offense in you know there's no doubt about that but i think sue young took her by surprise um and and yeah took the um, ended up becoming the new impact wrestling knockouts champion so sue young is now the new champion um, yeah two-time knockouts champion and um, after everything that um, Su- Susie and Sue Young have done throughout the year, the, the, the build to it, um, Sue Young was going to end up champion again at some point. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm glad it, it has happened because it's nice to see another um, someone becoming a two-time knockouts champion again because it, it seems it's jumped from one person to another a bit too much. It's like the world titles jumped from one person to another a bit too much recently. So it's good. It's good to see a returning champion again. You know, we've had it with the North. Now we've got it with the Knockouts title as well. It's good to see think things sort of stabilizing really, where, where they're booking everything. Oh, without doubt. I think, like I said, I I I think the match was really solid. Um, I think we got a great match. Like, I love the, I love the match. It, it it you know it was a shame it wasn't the the match that we'd all hoped it was going to be, but it wasn't disappointing. The match was really good. Yeah. Um, as you would expect from from two incredible wrestlers, right? Sue Young, at the end of the day, is no, you know, no one's bitch. You know, let's face it. She is um, an amazing um, wrestler. She's a great champion. Um, and the fact that she, you know, she surprised Diana, which is fair enough, you know, and I'm sure that that's what we're going to go with. It was a big surprise. She, need, you know, she didn't expect her and she wasn't ready and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but bottom line is this, uh, the new... Knockouts champion is Sue Young, and I, for one, I'm going to give this match four stars. I give it four, four, four point five. Yeah, yeah, again, it was everyone, one of the best. Again, everyone, please um, don't hesitate. Give us, leave us some comments below. You know, what did you think of this? The situation. What do you think of this match? What are your thoughts on 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 what's happened to Kylie? I don't know. We got no yeah. idea. You know, um, you know, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. I thought I thought the match was great. So regardless of anything, Impact gave us a good match, um, you know, and that's it. Four stars for me, definitely, without doubt. Now, leading out of that, we then get the uh, the promo for Hard to Kill. Um, now, Hard to Kill, January the 16th, 2021, uh, which is a Saturday again. Fantastic. Um, and guess what we're going to get? Well, we're finally going to get the Knockouts Tag Titles return. Well, that um, festered to Scott DeMore finally paid off. Yeah, yeah. He said he, <laughs> they've given us what we wanted. They've given us what we wanted. I think, you know, a, a good strong percentage of the fan base wants to see these tag titles return. Um, and I think it's a great thing. It gives the knockout something else to go for. Um, you know, it helps us in a sense to bolster the, again, you know, in, in bolster the roster. Because I think to make this work, we still need a couple of more knockouts to come in. You know, my votes are with Killer Kelly, um, you know, Lefesta, uh, Lefisto, def- definitely. Casey Spinelli and Alexa, Alexa are kind of color too. Like two Casey Spinelli would, would be really good. Um, and and you know, there's there's certainly um, a lot of great females uh, out there that could come in and be a part of this. I actually think we're going to see the reunion of Sarita and Taylor Wilde get involved in this, and I think that's uh, you know, the lead up to Hard to Kill. We will see a Taylor Wilde and Sarita return. Um, which I think is going to be great. I know the, the the plan is to do some kind of tournament, um, so it's going to be interesting to yeah. see how this all pans out over the next couple of weeks. We've got uh, a tournament in about uh, two weeks from when this podcast comes out, so three weeks from the date we're recording, two weeks in touch from when the podcast goes out. So we got we got a 
um, structure going already for Hard to Kill. It's going to be one team versus another. I'm hoping it's going to go down to Tasha Steels versus um, and Tasha Steels and Kira Hogan versus Havoc and Nevaeh. It'd be interesting. Yeah. I actually think that if Sarita and Taylor Wilde return, it will be them versus somebody. Yeah, but I think Tasha Steels and uh, Kira Hogan need, deserve we'll it see. more than anybody else. Oh, I yeah, I think they'd be great champions. And let's face the facts, they're very good at jaw jacking. Yeah, I mean, they 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 commentate their own matches. It's, fun, it's brilliant <laughs> watching watch, watching them. Tasha Steels since she's come in, has been um, absolutely amazing, and it's just but both boosted Kira Hogan again. She's been so consistent every every year. She's just not got the opportunity yet, and and I think now is the time to actually give her something because she's she, she's yeah. like doing her prize. So she w- wanted to go straight into Impact Wrestling after coming off of an um, an indie promotion rather rather than going to WWE. Going to Ring of Honor, going to, she Impact Wrestling was the first place she wanted to go after Shimmer and Shine and all the women's wrestling um, face places that um, she'd come off of. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I th- I think near the end of the day, um, this is exactly what we needed. It gives us another avenue of interest, something different. Um, you know, they're finding different things to give us um, after every single pay per view to build up to the next one. So we now know that a big part of the next one is going to be, you know, the introduction of crowning the very first new, you know, um, of this era, Impact Knockouts Tag Titles is going to be a big part of Hard to Kill, right? Um, and again, it gives everyone a reason to, to you know, uh, to show interest in the next pay-per-view. And I think that's exactly what Impact is so good at now. Yeah, you know? you know, we've only just had the access era last, um, last year. And, and look at what has happened. Tap- Look at, look at where it's gone in just uh, just o- over a year. Yeah, I think it's it's gone incredibly well, and uh, I, I just I'm just loving the way things are going now, and they they're so good at setting up that slow burn um, as well. So you know they've set up the tournament in a couple of weeks time, two three weeks time. We've got we've got the start of this tournament going on. Who are we going to see introduced into this? It's going to be interesting to see how this all pans out. Um, I hope everyone is excited about this as I am. Uh, I know Joe's excited about it. Um, we're both big fans of the knockouts division. We both believe it's the best female division in the world um and uh it's going to be great to see how this one pans out without doubt what are your thoughts you know leave us some comments below you know let us know um what do you think about the uh, you know the that we finally got the introduction um of the uh knockouts tag titles what do you think who do you think could be coming into the uh into the the knockouts roster who's going to join this tournament you know um you know is it going to be taylor wilde is taylor wilde finally going to make her, her um you know uh, come back with maybe sarita which is sarah stock if anybody's not sure um you know so you know there's lots of uh there's lots of possibilities in there where is this going to go who's let us know way. who's going to win it who do you think is going to win this tournament you know let us know who do you think will be the last two tag teams uh, to 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 be in this match at Hard to Kill um, in January next year. Let us know. You know, we'd love to hear your comments, guys. We really would. Um, now, then, you know, obviously we're then building now up to the main event, which is the um, yeah, which is for me was the most anticipated match of the night, um, and and I could not wait to watch this match. Um, so we've got Eric Young versus Rich Swan for the world title. Um, yeah, what. This is going to be, uh, you know, they show that they show the build, um, you know, how we got there, the tail of the tape or whatever you want to call it. that was the old school way of doing it, the tail oh, of the yeah. tape. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we got that introduction, which, again, as always, you know, really, really good uh, build into the match. Um, then we get obviously Eric uh, Rich Swan coming out and Eric Young coming out. Um, and, yeah, you know, there we go. We've got our, you know, our main event of the evening. Um, here we go. Bang. Um, what are your thoughts on this match, Joe? Because I've got mine. Um, I'm just interested in yours. I I loved it. I absolutely love this match. Um, everyone knows I'm a big fan of Rich Swan, and um, for in, in the shortest most of the time they built they built this match up. It didn't fa- it didn't fail to dis um to at least it didn't fail to disappoint. It didn't fail to deliver. <laughs> And then he just shot the match down in one sentence. Yeah, it did. It didn't fail to deliver. It was. It was. Um, it was the, the match of the night for me. And it was. Um, the it was like it was the Cinderella story we I expected. And 
I, I was just so, so glad to see how, how back and forth it went. It wasn't so it wasn't Eric Young dominating, and you know Rich Song wasn't wasn't didn't look weak. I mean, no, he, I, he, he, he on, just, sorry. It was like um, Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan all over again with just less weapons. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, <laughs> I think, I think this match had everything going for it. Okay, so like you said, you know, it could have ended up being a Cinderella story, or it could have all gone wrong and and ended like a horror story. Um, but you know, I, I honestly thought that, that it wasn't going to be a Cinderella story. I thought that was too obvious that that was going to happen. Um, I thought Eric was going to win, uh, but what a match! Like he had everything. Yeah. It really did. It had everything. I mean, it had story. There was um, like slow, methodical um, work from from Eric, and then we had the the explosive pace of Rich Swan, um, which I thought was really good. Um, I, I like the way that they created the neck issue. Um, for Rich Swan, so yeah, that, that was a good so, thing too. Yeah, that, I was expecting it all to be focused on my legs, and then when Rich Swan got dropped on his head, you could see something was wrong. Yep, and, I and, thought that was really, really clever because they literally took the whole emphasis away from the, the ankle to the neck. Because then what we got was Eric obviously methodically going for the neck um, yeah. and giving Rich an absolute beat down at that moment. Um, and then of course what we saw though was the the massive heart. Of Rich Swan, didn't we? The heart yeah. of a lion. It got me worried um, that he wasn't going to win when I saw the, the, the net the net go. I was thinking, oh, he's, he's not going to win this match. No, he, he can't do because he's going to get injured again. Because the yeah. the injury he suffered back in January is, is still on my mind too. You know, he literally he popped his tricep and broke tore his knee or something out of his socket, and he is out for six or six, nearly seven months. Yeah, yeah. Well, he broke his ankle, didn't he? Yeah. He, so. He, it was pretty, pretty nasty. Um, and then, of course, so I thought that, the, the, you know, it was clever to create a second um, injury or, or a second possible issue. It makes Eric Young look good, too. Yeah, because it gave Eric Young something else to aim for. And, of course, straight away, he saw what was going on and he went for it. You know, he was going for the for the injury area, um, which is exactly what we, we expected to do. Maybe Rich was playing him. Maybe he was pretending he had a neck issue because he wanted him to not worry and focus on the leg, wanted him to focus somewhere else. I don't know. There's loads of ways that you could look at it. You know, was Rich really clever and that's why he did it? You know, was he playing possum? Possibly. You know, you don't know, do you? Um, so, so we had a great story told in this match. I, for me, it was it was fantastic. Like I said, it had it had slow, methodical, it had uh, injections of pace, had incredible athleticism. The selling was amazing. Like, you oh, know, Rich, Rich Swan can really set, sell a match, and so can EY. I mean, if like EY Blake, you know, he looks injured or he looks like down and out or whatever, he looks really, you know, when he really sells, um, well. And I think, again, I think Bully Ray actually says this a lot on the uh, serious radio where he talks about the, the, the art of selling, um, in wrestling is 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 dead. Um, yeah. I, I beg to differ. I believe that, that, that we have wrestlers on this roster that are fantastic at selling. Yeah. Um, and two of them were on display tonight. Uh, sorry, but Bang for Glory. Two of them were on display in the main event. Um, I thought it was an, it was just an incredible match. Um, and again, like I said, it, I did not expect um, to see Rich Swan walk away. The new first time um, new Impact Wrestling World Champion Rich Swan. Nice. Um, so it happy. was amazing. It was a good feel good moment. Um, you know, when it all happened, you could tell EY was like totally shocked, couldn't believe it, you know. Um, and then, you know, he's sort of kind of like crawling up the ring and Rich Swan <laughs> is holding his holding aloft. It was great. It was I you know, it was a lovely feel good moment, even though I didn't expect it. And I'm I'm just gonna be very interesting to see where this goes from here. Because I honestly thought Eric was going to win and retain and move on. Uh, and Hard to Kill was possibly going to be the one where he lost it. I yeah. thought Eric was going to be the champion for the rest of this year, at least. Um, so I was really surprised. Um, and again, like you say, they, they play the swerve. A Cinderella story, Rich Swan wins. Um, you know, you get uh, the whole roster uh, again coming out to the ring to celebrate. Um, holding up Rich Swan aloft to uh you know celebrate with him and you could tell that everybody was just genuinely so pleased for rich um and, and i thought you know that was really good a nice way to end the show do you 
Uh, it, it was it was it was it was just great. It's um, so you pretty much said all I needed to say. But um, um, this week we've it's just gone by. Um, it's already we've already got at least th- um three people now going for the world title. We got Eric Young, we got Moose, and we have got Sammy Callahan, who, who's also got come in, He's also had a confrontation with Rich Swan with Ken. Ken Shamrock was by his side. Yeah, so, but I think that was for Ken. Yeah, that was for Ken though. Uh, yeah, but there's Sammy Callahan playing the mind games with Rich Swan, Swan there. So I'd love, you know, Sammy Callahan and Eddie Edwards go at it again. If Sammy Callahan and Rich Swan go at it again, that'd be even better. It'd be interesting to see how this all pans out, that's for sure. Like you say, this past week on Impact, we did see uh, the introduction of obviously Moose interested. Um, you know, we had uh, Eric Young get his rematch, um, which was a big mistake, because uh, <laughs> obviously Rich retained, so that's him out of the picture, actually, isn't it? Oh, it's, effectively. Not, it's not Eric Young's design. No, it's not by... He clearly, his design is, is not, not working out for him right now. Um, and like you say, you know, I think we've got the Ken Shamrock, Sammy thing going on as well. So... I'm not sure. I, th- I think we're just going to have to wait and see now um, how this set of tapings pan out over the next three or four weeks. Um, I think we, I think one thing's for sure is we've got an interesting ride ahead of us. Yeah. Um, again, I, I felt that the content that we were giving at Bound for Glory, the matches, I thought every single one were pretty good matches. Um, I gave the, the I, I thought it was five stars. I thought the main event was five stars. Um, you know, yeah, go for five. Yeah. Yeah, Jake, five, for, for five. five for me too. So, you know, 10 star match that one. That was a 10 star <laughs> match. Um, so, uh, fantastic. Again, guys, leave your comments below. Let us know your thoughts. What did you think of the match? What did you think of the results? Um, you know, we want to know everything. Again, you know, the opinions expressed here are mine and Joe's alone. Um, and, you know, that is what they are. They're opinions. So, but we want to know yours, you know, what are you going to spark in us? You yeah. know, is your, is, you know, are, have you got some kind of theory in your head that, that we need to know about, you know, and who knows that could spark something in us to come up with something even different or even fresher. Uh, maybe we'll agree. Who knows? Um, but we definitely are interested in your comments, guys. So, all that's left to say, really, is make sure that you give us a thumbs up. Um, I know we talk about the, being the thumbs up all the time. Make sure you give the channel a sub. Um, and don't forget to smash the bell to never miss, it, never miss a listen of any of the great content that we put out on a weekly basis. Um, obviously, the, the two of us, myself, Bison and Joe, are very active on the socials. Where can we find you, Joe? You can uh, find me on Twitter at uh, JK Empty Space. OK, and I know that you if you if you uh, fancy tash, uh, putting in a search for like hashtag the void or empty space or anything like that, Joe will pop up on Facebook. Uh, so don't hesitate to check him out on there. He does like talking wrestling and he does put out some interesting uh, memes every day, which is quite good. Um, I do enjoy watching those. Um, and if you're looking to follow the bison, um, that's hashtag follow the bison. Um, I am at Lord Bison 45 on Twitter, uh, Jason Hawk on, uh, on on Facebook. Um, mainly talk about wrestling on on Twitter. That's my outlet for that. Um, but you know, please, you know, feel free to follow me. And as I say, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, follow the channel, uh, or sub the channel, um, and don't forget to smash that bell. Smash the bell. So Think many great things. Every smash, you get to swing a chair at me, guys. So go <laughs> yeah. ahead. Every smash. Every smash is, uh, <laughs> is what we're after. <laughs> we love it. We love it. So, uh, yeah, don't forget, you know, every single thumbs up that you give us, etc., helps us turn up on other people's timelines. Lots of people get to watch us, which is great. Uh, we appreciate that. And don't forget to head over to Pro Wrestling Tees, Total Nonstop Impact uh, Shop, and purchase one of these bad boys. Yeah, no, hey, yeah. Well, we got a T-shirt on there, man. We got a T-shirt on there. Um, you know, for all the guys listening on audio, I'm pointing here right now to the, my backdrop, uh, which has got the uh, which has got the picture of uh, of our brand spanking new T-shirt design of Joe and myself as the characters, etc. Um, please head over, give it, give it, give it a purchase, and don't forget, we want to see your photos of you wearing the impacted new t-shirt um that would be awesome uh i'd love that and hopefully ours will come soon joe oh yes without doubt 
Okay, so uh, that has been this week's edition of uh, uh, Impacted, um, and it's been oh, it's been it's been great talking about Bang for Glory. Um, and you know, was it was it? What, I t- actually, I was going to ask you one last thing before we go, Joe. Okay. Which did you prefer, Bang for Glory or Slammiversary? I prefer. I did prefer Slammiversary. Yeah, but Slammiversary and Victory Road built up Bound for Glory um, really well, and Bound for Glory and is building up hard to kill. Hard to kill. So Impact Wrestling, they're rolling the ball now on building up at what's coming next. Yeah. Part of the, one big show, one big show. Really, and they have done since it's, um since Rebellion really. Even okay. though Re- Rebellion wasn't a pay per view. Yeah. This this year because of the pandemic, but Rebellion was going to be the pay per view, and they they've got they got the ball rolling there, and then the momentum dropped off obviously because of thing controversy there, but they built it back up when. when the rumours about the Good Brothers coming in, EC3 started appearing. The, when the ball started rolling there, it kept the momentum ha- hasn't stopped, e- even though we've had um, issues even get um, this Saturday with K- Kylie Ray sadly not showing up. And all, I'm hoping all the best for Kylie Ray. Um, and I'm hoping everything's right with, with her. Because well, I'm just a big fan of Kylie Ray, and I'm just hoping things are right there. But um, yeah, the the, the Momentum's been building from some anniversary, and it's going right through to 2021, which is exactly what a good good company should be doing. Exactly, I think they're doing a great job. And I have to say, from a from a if it was a if I was to say singular pay per view for me, um, I know I was I I was so hoping that Bang for Glory was going to be like the best pay per view of the year. I honestly thought it was going to be, but I have to say, I have to admit, I thought some anniversary was stronger. Um, but it was still good. I love the content. I enjoyed the way that they're building everything up. Um, you know, if I was to give it a star rating, it would probably be a four, whereas for me, Slamversy was a five. So, you know, anyway, leave your comments below, guys. Let us know what you think. You know, what was your favorite pay-per-view? Was it Bound for Glory? Was it Slammiversary? You know, let us know out of the two. Which was your favorite? And, we, you know, we, and we'd like to know your reasons, too. Give us your comments. Let us know what you thought. Um, but anyway... We better end right here, mate. We've been going for like an hour and 30, 30 minutes here. This is probably <laughs> the longest impact that we've ever done, I think. Longest um, for a while. Yeah, definitely. But anyway, I've been Bison. That's I've been, been Joker. The Joker. Sorry, sorry, Joe. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, there. Let's, no, no, let's, no. let's do that again. Let's great, do it again. Great mind and a lost mind think alike. That's true. Very true. Okay, so I've been uh, Bison. That's been that's been Joker. This has been our review of Bang for Glory. And this has been impacted take care guys